Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and I'm pleased to present our very first official game of Star Wars X-Wing 2.0. Ida Lee and I played last night, and we did record it, and you'll be watching that here in a couple of moments. But I wanted to show you the squads that we chose so that you knew what we had going into it. Ida Lee was playing the Rebel Alliance. It was basically two X-Wings and a Y-Wing. She had Dutch Vander with Ion Cannon Turret and R4 Astromech. Luke Skywalker, Proton Torpedoes, R2-D2, Heightened Perception, and then the Servo Motor S-Foils. They started closed for her, so she could boost. And then finally, Wedge Antilles, Proton Torpedoes, R2 Astromech, and also started with the S-Foils closed, despite what's pictured here. Alright, and then I had the Imperials. I had a TIE Advanced, a Shuttle, and a TIE Phantom. My Shuttle was Colonel Jendin, Fire Control Systems, Heavy Laser Cannon, Emperor Palpatine. Moving down to Darth Vader and the TIE Advanced Fire Control System. And then lastly, we had Whisper without Maneuver. My squad came to 197 points, and her squad came to 199 points. So I had initiative. Uh, that was the X-Wing 1.0 word for it. Now it's just first player token, but whatever. So as far as gameplay goes, I moved first and shoot first. In, in the case of a tie. If we both have fives moving at the same time, or f uh, two fives shooting at the same time, then I would go, and then she would go. All right, well, on to the game. Okay, and as you can see, we've got everything set up already. Uh, most of her ships, in fact, all of her ships are toward the top left. I sort of split my ships up. I've got the Lambda in the top right, my TIE Phantom, and TIE Advanced in the bottom right. So I start off by just moving my shuttle forward, nothing fancy. Now, Colonel Jendon has a special ability. At the start of the activation phase, you may spend one energy. If you do, while friendly ships acquire locks this round, they must acquire locks beyond range 3 instead of at range 0 to 3. So basically, if I were to activate that, I could have, say, Darth Vader perform a target lock from where he is. He's beyond range 3. His target is beyond range 3. So I'd be able to... And in fact, I think that might be what I'm doing right now. You also notice that uh, what's different about this video compared to my other videos, I've actually got two cameras going. The one camera focuses on the cards and the dice, while the other one just focuses on the miniatures on the table. I'm trying new things. Okay, so bear with me. I, I think the two videos are a little bit out of sync, but I tried really hard to keep them in sync as best as possible. I don't have, like, super high-tech professional software. Um, I've got uh, Corel Video Studio, <laughs> which it it's okay, but it crashes every now and again. Anyway, looks like Ida Lee is moving her Y-Wing next. Uh, my pilot skill with the shuttle is 3. Her Y-Wing is a 4. I'm going to pull up her list right now. Yeah, Dutch Vander is a 4. He's got an R4 Astromech and the Ion Cannon Turret. The Ion Cannon Turret can only attack at ranges 1 to 2, just FYI. Her R4 Astromech lets her perform maneuvers uh, at speed 1 and 2 at 1 less difficulty. So if it was a red maneuver, it would be white. If it's a white maneuver, it would be blue instead. So Let's say that she decides to K-turn or something, and then she gets a stress. On her next turn, it'll be easier for her to get rid of that stress if she were to use a speed of 1 or 2, because they would all be, I think, blue maneuvers. That's one thing I wish the Fantasy Flight website had. At least if they do have it, I can't find it. Um, the maneuver dials or the different maneuvers that the ship could take as they play. Or, you know, as, they, as they're meant to play. But anyway, looks like... Idalee's... Okay, my TIE Phantom went, and I took the cloak action. And then her X-Wing is now going. I believe that's Luke Skywalker. Both have a pilot skill of 5, and because I have initiative, or in this case, the first player token, I would move first, or activate first, and then I'd be shooting first. Now, for those of you new to X-Wing, um, just because I shoot first doesn't mean that they can't fire back. Uh, there's something called a simultaneous roll, to where if two, say, let's say two fives shoot each other, the one five shoots, and let's say that that the let's say the shooter destroys the target. That ship does not get removed from the board until after that that other ship is resolved if they're tied. 
So uh, that that's the simultaneous fire roll. Normally, when you destroy someone, they get removed from the board. But if they have the same initiative or the same pilot skill, rather than um, you, you'd resolve both attacks before the one got removed. So it's possible for them to blow each other up. Lastly, we have uh, Darth Vader moving here. He's got a pilot skill of six with fire control system. And his abilities sort of tie together. Um, Darth Vader has advanced targeting computer, which says, while you perform a primary attack against a defender that you have locked, roll one additional attack die and change a hit to a crit. Fire control system does something similar. It, it feeds off of that target lock. And uh, basically, fire control system says, while you perform an attack, if you have a lock on the defender, you may re-roll one die. If you do, you cannot spend your lock during this attack. So basically, Darth Vader wants to target lock his, well, target at all times, just so he can use both of those abilities. And it looks like Wedge and Tilly's is moving right up there. Now, in case you're wondering, um, as far as the tokens are concerned, those are not standard issue. I did decide to buy some acrylic tokens, and let me say, they are fantastic. Absolutely wonderful. Um, I got them off of Etsy, uh, which is a website which sells all sorts of things. And um, I'll have to, if I remember, I'll put a link to, in the below description to the store I bought them from. Now, Idalee's driving me crazy with her tokens. She loves to mess with me uh, just because she finds it funny. But she'll put tokens on the bases or on the ships and it drives me crazy. But anyway, so yeah, Darth Vader took the target lock from way back there using Colonel Jendon's ability. Um, and it looks like all of her pilots took a focus action, but doesn't really... Yeah, they can't do anything right now. We're, we're not close enough. My cloak token stays, and Darth Vader's target lock stays. And we're moving on to the second round. There may be some delays in between some of these, just because with Idly being new to the game, uh, and, I, and I don't want to rush her either. Uh, she... She's new to the game and not familiar with all the mechanics, so, you know, as, as a new player, you could expect to sit there for 10-15 minutes trying to figure out, okay, what am I going to do next? What happens if I do this? Where should I move? Who moves first? Because that's a big thing in X-Wing. Who's moving first? Who's, you know, and, and, and being able to move first before someone else may make a big difference in the world when it comes to collisions. Like, if you've got a... Let's say you've got um, a four parked behind a five. The four would move first, and it's possible for that four to move right into that five wreck and then not be able to take an action. Something like that. So you got you to gotta be really careful about your... Pl I think the planning phase is where most of the action happens, actually. I mean, that, that's where... That's what you have control over. You have no control over the dice that you're rolling, Right. I mean, yes, you can modify it with focus, but what if you roll all blanks or what have you? Or, you know, you could, you could do an evade token. But still, I mean, dice is very, are very unpredictable. So with the planning phase, that's, that's what you sort of have the most control over. So it, it makes sense to spend time there just standing back and going, okay, what's my opponent going to do? What, what can I do with my ship's? I may not know where they're going to exactly go on the board after I reveal my maneuver. Uh, you know, I mean, the pros know where they're going to go because, you know, they've got those maneuver templates down pat. But beginners don't. Uh, even moderate players sometimes miscalculate their maneuver and end up going right into an asteroid or something. It happens. But, yeah, I mean, I got to say, like, that that's the biggest draw, I think, is just the planning phase. I, I, I really like... The freedom one has here and this is where really where most of the strategy comes into play okay so at this point in the game where full health nothing's happening um for those of you that are new to 2.0 there is something called a systems phase where decloaking and bombs happen we don't have any bombs on us but we i can decloak during the systems phase that happens right before the activation phase so uh, basically i'll decloak Take an evade because that is one of, uh, I think it's Whisper's abilities. Let's take a look here. Um, Stygium Array. After you decloak, you may perform an evade action. At the start of the end phase, you may spend one evade token to gain one cloak token. So yeah, I can... Now one thing I forgot to do 
often in this game was take his ability, which is after you perform an attack that hits, gain one of A token. So there were instances where I forgot to take my free of A token, but again, that's... I haven't played X-Wing in a while, and I don't claim to be a professional. Okay, so the shuttle's moving up a bit. Again, the shuttle moves first because they have the lowest pilot skill. Next would be the Y-Wing. Looks like I took the focus action there. Now, thinking, looking back, I probably would have should have taken a coordinate. Maybe bearer roll the TIE Phantom or something like that. Coordinate lets you, let you assign an action to someone else, basically. Give someone else a free action. All right, so the Y-Wing's moving up. Not in range, so can't do a target lock. Probably going to take a focus. Yep. Or he, or she could take... Um, I don't think she has a barrel roll. Let me check her card. And... No, the actions... Oh, yeah, she could take a barrel roll. It's focus, target lock, red barrel roll, or the reload action. Now, she doesn't have any torpedoes, so the reload action's not going to work for her. But, um... Yeah. She could bear a roll if she wanted to, but she took the focus. And it looks like I'm discussing my options with her and helping her out as best I can. Oh, she's changing her turret. That's another action she could take. She has the Ion Cannon Turret. So, um, it looks like she adjusted... Yeah, she adjusted the gun to shoot to her right. Which makes sense. Because if she flies along the outside of the board, her Ion Turret will be facing inward toward the center of the board. So that, that makes perfect sense. Now she's got a front arc with her primary weapon and a right arc with her secondary uh, Ion. Okay, so I'm going to move up with my TIE Phantom here. Cleared the shuttle just barely. And I think my actions with the TIE Phantom include Focus, Evade, Barrel Roll, and Cloak. Now, I don't really need to cloak. Oh, I did cloak. That's weird. I wonder if I cloaked... Because I didn't think I was going to be in range. Now, there's a weird action for me to take. And looking back, I probably would have taken a barrel roll or a focus. Probably a focus. But this, this, this cloak evade combo gives me a lot of defensive abilities. Just because when you're cloaked, you get two extra defense dice. And the evade lets you change the defense die into an evade. So if you roll like a blank or something, you can change that blank into an evade. Which is different than 1.0. In 1.0, the evade token just acted as its separate, as like a separate die that you didn't roll, and it was always an evade. So if you rolled three dice, and they were all evades, and you had an evade token, you end up with four evades. Not in 2.0, though. If you rolled three evades, you had three evades. Um, turning an evade into an evade is the same thing. So, yeah. So it looks like her uh, Luke Skywalker moved. And she's considering a boost, and she has that boost because her S-foils are closed. And I'm showing... Now, normally you wouldn't be able to do that, but as a beginner, I was showing her the different options that she had with her boost ability. And it looks like she's opting to boost one and slight turn. Yep, yeah, one bank. There we go. And I gotta say, for a beginner, she did really well in this game. I mean, she... Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but she held her own. I will say that. Yes, I helped her here and there, but still. She's the one that planned all of her maneuvers. So, my Darth Vader moved up uh, five straight. My goal here was to flank from the left side. Whether or not it would work is a different story. I was I was hoping that if his, if his wedge which is his uh, bottom-most X-Wing. I was hoping that if he went to the right of that asteroid ahead of him, and he would have to fly between those two asteroids, um, I would be able to just sort of swoop in with Darth Vader, just make a hard right, and then just come in behind him. And I believe I just took a focus there. 
Nothing fancy. Darth Vader didn't have a boost. Which was odd. I mean, I, I don't remember if he had a boost in 1.0 or not, but my abilities are focus, uh, which I can turn into a barrel roll as well. So I can do focus barrel roll, but the barrel roll is red. I can do a target lock, and I can just do a regular barrel roll. I can also perform different force actions. Uh, after you perform an action, you may spend one force to perform an action. So it's sort of like Darth Vader's 1.0 ability, but you have to spend an action, another force to do that. Uh, advanced targeting computer already explained that one. Fire control system already explained that one. So I think we're good on what he can do. Okay, it looks like Wedge is considering a boost as well. Now, I just realized, um, under the Darth Vader card on the bottom left window of that other camera, it looks like I assigned myself Heightened Perception, even though it wasn't, a, it wasn't on my squad builder. I never used it this game, so it doesn't matter. But in case you're wondering why there's two cards under Darth Vader when he only has the fire control system, that's why. I gave myself the Heightened Perception card, but I never used it, so... Technically, I didn't cheat. I just, I put a card out when I shouldn't have. That's all. So just ignore that second card where Darth Vader's, Darth Vader is the center card on the left. He's got two shields and three force tokens on him. All right, so my plan with Darth Vader kind of backfired here. All of her ships were going to the left. And Darth Vader would have taken a couple, it's now going to take Darth Vader a couple of moves just to get within range of these guys. So that leaves my TIE Phantom and my shuttle to fend for themselves, not what I wanted to do at all. But now that I'm, I, yeah, with, um, now that I'm cloaked, I can't shoot. So um, he's going to shoot, I think that's his Luke's, yep, I'm, I'm pulling out, I'm trying to see if the, uh, the asteroid clips, and it's hard to tell from here. When you're measuring, I go from closest base to closest base. And that's that one corner to my shuttle's corner. And it looks like it does. And I'll find out in a minute. I think I'm taking it. Yep. Three attack dice. Oh, no. Two attack dice for Luke because his S-foils are closed. She never opened them yet. You have to open them at the beginning of your activation phase. So one default, one asteroid, and then one for range three. Yep. I love it when I am able to visualize that for myself, just because my memory is terrible. Yep, so three three evasive dice there. So she's going to roll two, I'm going to roll three. And that's really the only one that can shoot this round. And it looks like she got a hit in a blank. And I rolled at least one of eight, I think. Yep. So one of eight, no damage. So taking pot shots at each other, mainly her. Now, my shuttle has a heavy laser cannon, and it operates very similar to uh, X-Wing 1.0. The only real difference here is that you have to be in the bullseye arc in order to fire it, which is different. But you do get four dice. They all turn into hits, though. If, if you roll any criticals, those criticals have to convert to hits. Okay, so if you see my camera jumping from time to time, it's because my DSLR only records in 20-minute spurts. So, yeah, that's annoying. It's especially annoying when the other camera can go beyond that. So I have to, in, in post-processing... I have to cut out a portion of the other video and then try and sync them up again, which again, it's a real pain. There's got to be an easier way to do this. If you folks have any, any experience or knowledge with programs that make it easy to sync up videos, then feel free to leave suggestions in the comments below. Okay, so uh, with Sunter Fell, I am cloaked. I'm going to decloak now. That's part of the systems phase. 
Sometimes I forget to decloak at that time, but I think it only happened once or twice. And Ida Lee was kind enough to let me do it. Again, this isn't tournament play. And again, whenever you decloak, um, you use the two template. And Whisper also gets, because of the Stygium particle accelerator or whatever, um, an evade token. And now we move as normal, starting with the shuttle. And it's a one slight turn. Not the arc I really wanted here. I was trying to funnel her down in between those two asteroids to the, the, the upper middle one and the upper right. Try and funnel her that way and then at least get a few pot shots. But she's in a good position. Oh, I forgot to put the little base on. There we go. Those are ID markers. Basically, each one has like a number on it, like one, two, three. And there's a, a matching target lock of the same number. So instead of having to put... In 1.0, you had a blue and a red target lock. And they would be of the same letter. So A, A, B, B, C, C, whatever. You'd have the blue A, A on the shuttle or, or on, the, on the attacker and the blue or the red AA on the defender. Now it's just what, what, whatever their ID is, look at that number and then assign a target token of the same number, which is, is it's less tokens on the board. And I, I kind of like that. I thought that was pretty ingenious. All right. So now her Y wing is moving. And it looks like, I don't know what I took as my action. It's either focus or a oh, reinforce. Okay, that's what I did. I reinforced my front. The reinforce action, basically, if you're attacked on that front side, then if you take a front reinforce, um, is that reinforce? I can't tell. The tokens are too far away. That might those actually might be target locks. All right, never mind. But I'll, I'll finish my thought. Reinforce is um, it negates one damage, which is nice. If you're attacked on that, that front side, if you take a front reinforce and you're attacked in the front, then it's one less damage. But anyway, her Y-Wings ability gives her, uh, uh, was it Dutch Vander? After you perform the target lock action, you may choose one friendly ship at range 1 to 3. That ship may acquire target lock on the object you locked, ignoring range restrictions. So, whenever Vander locked my shuttle... She could choose one of her friends at range 1 to 3, and they would also get a target lock on the shuttle. Really nasty, especially since the X-Wings have proton torpedoes. And it looks like the X-Wing Luke Skywalker is flying through an asteroid. Now, whenever you fly through one, you do take damage. Well, you have to roll for it. If you roll a hit or a crit, you take that damage. And it looks like a hit to me. So it looks like she might have lost one shield. Yep. Flipping that over now. And you also do not get to take an action. You can still shoot, though. Now, landing on an obstacle is a different story. Those are That's a different rule set. Basically, same things, except I don't believe you can shoot in 2.0. In 1.0, you couldn't. I'd have to look up the rules for 2.0, but I'm pretty sure they're the same. All right, so I believe the next one is Darth Vader. Now, uh, Luke Skywalker has R2-D2, which allows you to spend an energy, get a disarm token, uh, but you can recover one shield. So whenever you use it, uh, you won't be able to shoot that round. So it's best to use it when you know you're not going to attack anyone. She's at range one. She can attack me, so using it there might have been a bad idea. She didn't use it. Um, her S-foils are now open, so she can shoot, I believe, uh, at, at regular strength. Heightened Perception, Luke Skywalker has that as well. And basically, she, he can spend a force to uh, act as a pilot skill of 7. So he would get first dibs on shooting. 
So if someone, if Darth Vader were to attack him first and possibly kill him, Luke Skywalker could use that uh, seven Trump six. So Luke could shoot first and possibly kill Darth Vader before Darth Vader even gets a shot. So that's kind of nice. And Luke Skywalker also has proton torpedoes. Luke Skywalker also has two force tokens. And he does recover one every time he becomes the defender of an attack. So not only does he recover one at the end phase, but he recovers one whenever he's the defender. So he's going to use a lot of force if given the opportunity, just because he can regenerate it so quickly. All right, Wedge is moving in for the kill. Darth Vader can't do anything, so Wedge would be the next one to shoot at this point. And she has a choice. Does she go after my TIE Phantom, which has a Focus Anavay token? Or does she go after my shuttle, which she does have target locked? Yep, so she has a choice. The TIE Phantom is the weaker of the two, and packs more of a punch. But at the same time, Emperor Palpatine is on that shuttle, and Emperor Palpatine lets me spend a force. He comes with one force himself. He can spend a force to change the die of another friendly ship's attack or defense uh, from a focus to whatever it should be, evade or hit. They've changed it. They've nerfed it slightly in, in, in the way it was worded. Um, the way it is worded exactly. Uh, let me pull up the card here. Okay. Emperor Palpatine, 13 points. Uh, while another friendly ship defends or performs an attack, you may spend one force to modify one of its dice as though that ship had spent one force. That is different than what he used to do. What he used to do was he could change the result of any die, blank, whatever. But whenever you're using force to modify dice, you have to modify a focus, not a blank. You have to modify a focus to become a hit or an evade. So it's it's less powerful, but it it's still being able to, to give someone else a force whenever they need it is kind of nice. All right, so it looks like. I missed the I missed what happened, but let me take a look at my shields and see. Looks like I'm evading. All right, so it looks like I take one hit on my shuttle. Yep. So Wedge and Tilly's did one damage to my shuttle, and now the fives go. The fives consisting of the Tie Phantom and Luke Skywalker's X-wing, which are in range one of each other. I shoot first because I have initiative. Or the quote-unquote first player token. But I could either shoot Luke, but I've got... Um, yeah. I, hmm. Okay, yeah. So I am attacking Wedge. And basically I'm trying to focus him down because all of my target locks are on Wedge. So I'm, I'm just trying to focus on one at a time. Especially since Luke has R2-D2. Uh, Wedge does have an R2 unit as well, so he can regen shields. So I don't want to separate my damage too much here. Okay, so what did she roll? She did... Uh, it looks like she rolled some focus. Okay, so she took three hits there. She rolled two focus. Um, Wedge and Tilly's did not have any uh, focus tokens. Now, Luke could have spent two force there if I had shot him and rolled two focus. He could have spent two focus to change those to evades and negated a lot of that damage. It's another reason why I'm focusing on Wedge first, because he has less defensive options. So Wedge is uh, taking three hits. And I believe has about three hull left. X-Wings by themselves. Let's go back to my menu here. X-Wings have four hull and two shields. Yeah. 
So he has three more hits before he's out. And it looks like Luke is shooting possibly the shuttle with four dice. Ooh, nasty. Yeah, that happens when it comes to rolling. Even at range one, sometimes those blanks come up and it's... Like I said, dice are very unpredictable. Luke does have a target lock, so he's going to spend it to reroll those three. And Idly is wondering about proton torpedoes here. Proton torpedoes only operate at range two to three, so she can't use them here. But he is using four dice for his primary attack, three for his regular and one for the range one bonus. And it looks like, yep, I was advising her to spend a focus to change the focus to a hit. So she's got three hits there. Possibly a crit somewhere in there. It's hard, it's hard to see. One evade. So two hits to my shield. So it doesn't matter if it's a crit or a hit at this point. Uh, crits don't uh, go through shields. So my, uh, my shuttle is down to three. No, oh, one, two, three. Yeah, I have three shields gone, and I've got one left. And I'm measuring to see if I have an arc, which I don't. Love that tool. And now the Y-Wing gets to go. The Y-Wing has a target lock on the shuttle. Shooting through an asteroid, though. Yeah, there's no, she she had a side arc for her ion, but not at range three. Her ion turret only works at range one to two, so she could not have shot the Tie Phantom with her ion. But she can use her primary on the shuttle, and it looks like it's a range two bone. Yeah, range two. I love it when I help myself out. Oh. That must have been range three then. One for the shuttle, one for the asteroid. And yeah, here I'm showing her that the range is one to, or yeah, one to two and would not work here. Two blanks, doesn't matter. Even if I, if I only had two defense dice there, it wouldn't have mattered. Okay, um, so that ends that round. Um, with the end phase, I have the option to cloak by turning in my evade token. Darth Vader is still out in no man's land somewhere. He'll pop back in eventually. I realize that window is sort of covering him up, but he's not doing anything out there right now. I guess he's just making Sith tea or whatever. Whatever they do. I don't know if Darth Vader has like a Keurig in his tie advanced and he's making you know, the equivalent of Sith coffee or Sith tea, whatever. He could be. Maybe that's how Darth Vader regains force power. Back to another intense round of planning. I've got a few options here uh, with the TIE Phantom. I mean, if I decloak now, moving forward would be a problem. I'd end up probably moving to the side probably to the left if I were to decloak. There's not a whole lot of options. Decloaking to the right, I don't think I would clear that shuttle. So I'd, I, if I were to decloak here, it would have to be either forward or to the left. I don't think I'd, I'd clear that X-Wing to the front of me. So I would probably be decloaking to the left and then doing maybe a hard turn. The shuttle is kind of in a bad position here. I mean, I can use him to... My goal was to use him to block, make him run into me, um, I've also got a rear firing arc, which is kind of nice. Uh, that's something that's different in 2.0. And, um, in this game, you get three attack dice out the front arc and two dice out the back arc. So my goal now maybe was to turn into those asteroids, maybe between them. And then any X-Wings that flew by me, I'd use my rear firing arc to maybe get a few hits in. We'll see if it happens. And Darth Vader is still out there making coffee. As he does.
in an attempt to fill in some dead air here, uh, in case you're not familiar with outmaneuver on Whisper, if you um, attack someone and you are outside their firing arc, meaning that you're flanking them, they roll one less defense die. So as the TIE Phantom here, I'm trying to attack people outside of their firing arc as best I can. I'm trying to, I'm trying to use my cloaking, decloaking, and all that stuff to get behind people so that they can, uh, well, and it's just so I can blow them up. I was kind of worried for the TIE Phantoms. The TIE Phantoms got nerfed in 2.0, I think. Um, they used to have four attack dice. Now they only have uh, three. And a lot of those abilities, like there was advanced cloaking device, and they, they had a lot of upgrade cards that suited them in 1.0, and they were tough to kill. Now they're a bit easier to kill, but I still love the TIE Phantom for its cloaking mechanics. I, 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 I would love to field three or four of them and see how well I do in 2.0. That's one thing I would really like to see. And if you need to, feel free to fast forward the video here to the actual action. Like I said, sometimes we do take we do take some time to plan moves and as a beginner, I wholeheartedly accept when Idalee needs the extra time to think about her options. And I'd rather her put thought into it than just blindly pick stuff and... Because it, it's not fun that way, you know? Do you really want to play against someone that's going to go, oh, whatever, I'll just choose that one. Or would you rather play against someone that is really trying to... Um, really trying to, to get all the mechanics down to their, you know, to their best possible thought pro uh, ability, thought process, whatever. And yes, I have some bottled water nearby. This video is like an hour and a half long, so gotta wet my whistle every now and again. <clears throat> All right, so the shuttle is moving in one slight turn from the looks of it. Again, just trying to get them to fly past me. And then maybe I can shoot them at my rear arc. And it looks like I take the focus action. Alright, and at this point in time, the Y-Wing still has a target lock on me. He's number six. He doesn't have a ring around his base because the turret, it, it won't fit there while the turret, the rotatable turret is there. But he is number six, and he has that six target lock on my shuttle. Now, in theory, she could target lock my Phantom, and then have Luker Wedge target lock the Phantom as well, using uh, Dutch Vander's ability. Or she could just, you know, opt for a focus or something. Now, if she bearer rules here, that might take her out of range 1 to 2. I'm not sure. It could. And there's really no reason for her to barrel roll anyway, because the shuttle's arcs are not touching her at all. And I think she's still thinking about her action for the Y-Wing. At the moment, Darth Vader and the shuttle, I believe? There's two target locks there on that X-Wing. Hmm. 
I wonder if I messed up on that. I gave Colonel Jenden a fire control system, but I don't think I can actually lock. I've got focus, reinforce. Okay, so that might have been a mistake on my part when putting this list together for myself. I gave myself fire control system. I thought I could target lock, but apparently my... Um, yeah, my actions are focus, reinforce, uh, coordinate, and jam. Hmm. All right, well, that was a mistake on my part. Sorry, folks. Whether or not it matters is a different story. We'll see. I think the shuttle did have target lock in the previous game. So, or in X-Wing 1.0. And I bumped my own ship here. And the reason for that, I was hoping that to catch one of those ships in that eastern quadrant of the board. Plus, I didn't have a whole lot of other place to go. Especially since I was moving my shuttle that way. The downside is I don't get to take an action. Alright. And it looks like Luke gets to go next. Possibly a three. Or maybe even a Talon roll. That's that's one thing I don't expect out of the X-Wings in 2.0. I mean the the T-70s, the you know, the 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 dope um Poe Dameron. Almost said dope hammerin. Uh, Poe Dameron, his X-Wings could do Talon rolls and the like, but the the older X-Wings couldn't. But now in 2.0 they can. That was actually, a, that's what I mean, like, she came up with that all on her own. That And that's a, that's a very good spot for her. She could do a lot of damage at range 1, even though she doesn't have an action. Um, she can still do a lot of damage at range 1. That's 4 attack dice. She could go after the shuttle, which just has a focus. Or after the TIE Phantom, which has an evade. It's, it's a tough call. Alright, Darth Vader, I think, is starting to come back into play here. There he comes. By time. His coffee is done brewing. Taking a focus there. And Wedge is... Possibly doing either a 4 straight or a 4k turn. Oh, 4k turn. Nice. Again, did not coax her at all. She cleared the asteroid, didn't run into it, and is also in a range 1 shot of my shuttle. So she's doing great. And she's got the target lock from... Oh no, she doesn't have a target lock, I don't think. What did she, what did she take last turn? Must have been like a focus or something. But still, a range one shot with four dice, that's really good. Really good. All right, so Darth Vader gets to shoot first. Probably going to go after Wedge, considering that the target lock is on him. I mean, yes, Luke is closer. Might have a range one shot there. But with Luke being able to regen shields and Wedge being able to regen shields, it's very important for me to focus fire on one of them at a time. And Darth Vader, so it's probably range 2 shot, I think. We'll find out, depending on how many dice she has. Alright, so 3 attack dice. I get an extra one. I get 2 normally. A third one is for my advanced targeting computer. And you've got... Okay, so it's a range 3 shot, actually. She gets two defense dice plus one for range. Now, as my targeting computer can turn a hit into a crit, spending a force to change a focus into a hit, 
and my yep, advanced targeting computer can turn a hit into a crit, so I'm going to adjust that. So it looks like it might be two hits and a crit, or two crits and a hit, I can't tell. But if there's three hits there, we'll see what she rolls. Wedge needs to roll well. Looks like I see stuff on maybe one of eight and two focus. All right, so you take damage. Yeah, yeah, she took damage. Am I showing in the camera? Do I remember? I do. Damaged engine. Increase the difficulty of hard bank maneuvers. Meaning that if it's a white bank or like a white hard turn, then it becomes a red hard turn making it more difficult to perform. So it looks like, yeah, she's got one more life point on Wedge at this point in time. Now Wedge gets to shoot. Even if Wedge got destroyed here, Wedge would still get to shoot as part of that simultaneous attack rule. Wedge and Darth Vader have the same pilot skill. And Wedge is probably going to roll four dice there against the shuttle. Unless he's going to go after someone else, but probably not. She's been focusing on the shuttle this entire time. I doubt she would change her tactics. All right, that's what, oh, that was a beautiful roll. Look at that. It's what, four hits? Four hits. And I, and Wedge's ability prevents me from rolling dice because Wedge's ability says that when you're attacking, the defender rolls one less uh, defense dice. So I've, I, my, by default, my shuttle has one. So I have zero defense dice. I took four hits there. So I am very near death at this point. I have, I think, a hull value of six. And so now she has a decision to make. Will she attack my TIE Phantom at range one? Or will she try and finish off the shuttle? But see, her, her Y-Wing could also possibly take me out. And so it, it it's... What am I doing? I'm measuring something. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Oh, I would maybe I was measuring the distance. I don't know. Oh, I was measuring to see if um, I had outmaneuver with the TIE Phantom, but I don't because I'm attacking Wedge. Wedge has a target on me. Like he, he I'm in his forward arc, I believe. We'll find out depending on how many dice she rolls. But so it looks like I did two dice there. And she has to roll two, one of eight. So that's one damage gets through, wedge gets taken out. That's four four hull. Bye bye wedge. Sorry. So yeah, now Luke gets to shoot. Luke has to decide to either shoot the phantom or try and finish off the shuttle. There's a risk here, because if the X-Wing goes after the Phantom, and the Y-Wing fails to finish the job, you know, what do you do then? Yep, she's deciding, trying to figure out what, what she's going to do with Luke. What she's going to do with Luke.
Yeah, she's still deciding. This this was tough for her. So she's going to go after the Phantom from the looks of it. I've got two defense dice plus the evade token. So four attack dice. She's stressed, but... I really should have taken a rear reinforce here, I think, on my shuttle. Probably it would have negated some of that damage. Okay, so she's got... That was a great roll on her part. Look at that. Beautiful. She's going to use a force to... Yep, four damage. I've got one evade. I've got an evade token. Which Idly actually pointed out to me. So um, I'm going to turn that into an evade. So I've got two evades. So basically I take two hits. So I lose two shields... No hull damage yet, but my, my Phantom is defenseless, and I believe I have a hull value of three. So I can take three more hits on my Phantom. And now, the Y-Wing gets to shoot. Now here's where I forgot uh, on my Phantom. I did land a shot on Wedge's X-Wing. I should have taken an evade here, but I forgot to. That evade would have let me... I could turn that evade in to cloak at the end of this round, but I, I forgot. But I had an evade prior when I decloaked, but because I attacked Wedge, I should have gotten another evade token per Whisper's ability. But that's one thing I kept forgetting this, this game was Whisper's ability, which is kind of crucial. I mean, Whis Whisper is powerful because of that reason. The ability to cloak almost every single round without having to take the action. All right, so the Y-Wing, did I, huh, I took two damage here possibly. Now, what's confusing to me, maybe, maybe I, I didn't see how many damage cards I had on my shuttle. Maybe there was some underneath there that I, that I missed. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. It was a practice game. Either, either the shuttle should have been alive still, or I just miscounted the damage cards, but whatever. The shuttle has a hull value of 6. There she would have done... I can't see how many damage that is, but it looks like 3. So that would have been 1 evade, and then a hit, and an ion, from the looks of it. But still. It was on its last leg anyway, <laughs> just saying. All right, so here's, again, being able to decloak here would have been awesome. If I were to, I probably would have decloaked to the right, past the X-Wing, and then moved, maybe done like a one hard turn, coming in on the Y-Wing or the rear of the X-Wing, something like that. But again, because I forgot to take the evade token, I couldn't cloak at the end of the end phase, and that was, again, my bad. To be fair, and, and to my defense, I haven't played in months. Alright, so we are almost an hour into this already. That goes to show you, if you go, if you go to play X-Wing and, and you're new at this, Expect to spend two hours or so because A, the rules are not going to be familiar to you, and B, a lot of your time is going to be spent planning, trying to figure out what you're going to do next. As I pace nervously on camera, sporting my PJs. Now, Luke Skywalker is going to be a tough bird to take down, just because 
the ability to regenerate force, and he's got R2-D2 that he can activate uh, three times. That's what separates him from the other R2 astromech. The R2 astromech does the same thing as R2-D2, but the R2 only has, uh, R2 astromech only has two charges, R2-D2 has three. But the question is, and I've had to ask myself this, am I really going to use that ability three times in one game? Under X-Wing 1.0, the answer would be yes. Anytime you took a green maneuver, you got to use R2-D2. Absolutely, you could use it more than three times, or three or more, three or more times. But in 2.0, you have to take a disarm token in order to do it now. So it's like R2-D2 and the, the uh, regenerating shield astromechs, they become more situational and harder to use, I think. Especially if you're constantly in range one or two of someone that you want to shoot. To me, the R2 units went from, you know, being useful anywhere to a, a jousting, to, to being suitable to a jousting ship. One that would fly in, do a bunch of damage, fly away, regenerate shields, and then come back in for another pass. That, that's where I can see the R2 units being useful in 2.0. Or if you just happen to land somewhere, or maybe you know that you're going to move somewhere and not be an arc of anyone. Maybe that's when you can regenerate that shield. Now, as a reminder, her um, ion cannon turret arc is to the left. The left that I'm looking at. So toward the center of the board. So she's got... Ion shots on both of us. So as long as we're in range 1 to 2. But we'll see what happens after we move. And there's the dog Sarah in the background, upper left, sniffing around, trying to figure out what she can get into. German Shepherds, for the record, great dogs. Absolutely great dogs. Very loyal. They'll follow you anywhere. They are very demanding, though, so don't go out and buy one unless you have the ability to keep up with them. They are demanding, they will tell you what they want, and they are very vocal. Very, very vocal. And don't, don't expect any privacy either. If I'm going to the bathroom, she's got to go to the bathroom. If I'm going in here, she's got to go in there. If I'm just going to get groceries from the car, she's got to go to the door and make sure that she's watching me every step of the way. Because I won't let her outside without a leash. Always leash your dogs. All right, so her Y-Wing, that was actually a good move on her part. She may not have a forward arc on anyone, but that side arc is in a good spot. Darth Vader would fly into it, and it's too soon to tell if my TIE Phantom would fly out of it. If I had a decloak here, I'd be able to decloak maybe to the left. See, again, having a decloak... Would have been nice during the systems phase. Looks like the Y-Wing is taking a target lock on Ty, on Darth Vader. And because Dutch Vander's ability is give another target lock to someone else, Luke Skywalker now performed a target lock on Darth Vader. So I know who the next target is, and I just got to be careful. And it's hard to tell if it looks like I'm in arc of that Y-Wing, the side arc. So I may try to barrel roll here. Not sure I can get away with it, but... And again, um, Idly and I play casually, so don't leave nasty comments about what we can and cannot do. Um, I, plenty of times I've given her the benefit of the doubt and said, yeah, whatever. No problem. And that's how gaming should be. I can see in tournament play where the role's being a bit more strict, but 
in a casual game, you're, you're there to have fun. You're there just to move ships around. You're there to pew pew, have fun. And it looks like I... Eh, that's debatable. I might have moved the template with my finger there. I can't tell. All right, so it looks like Luke moves next. Question is, where is he going? And it looks like Ida Lee ended up on the asteroids. Unfortunate. But again, that kind of thing happens when you're a beginner. You sometimes misjudge where you think you're going to be and where you actually end up. All right, so I believe everyone's moved at this point. Oh, except for Darth Vader, which actually puts him in a really good spot. Range one of Luke Skywalker. He's not going to pass that one up. And Darth Vader could use a force power here to give himself an extra action. Probably what I did. Target lock is a definite, considering that two of his abilities, advanced targeting computer and fire control systems, operates that way. Oh, and it looks like Ida Lee was opting to do... She wanted to do that R2-D2 um, ability, but forgot to do it at the beginning of her turn. It's whenever you reveal the dial. But she forgot to do it. I let her do it because, you know casual game so she recovered one shield from doing that but she has a disarm token not that she was going to fire at anyone anyway all right so i took a focus used a force and i believe took a target lock yeah i had to i mean i if i didn't i wouldn't be much of an x-wing player And Ida Lee actually has a notepad. She's been, she's been taking notes, which is, again, makes me smile a bit just because she she's trying to learn. And her words, like, she likes the game, but it, the game overwhelms her a lot just because there's a lot going on. And I'm not sure what the debate is over. I was probably explaining how for, uh, the energy charges work. So anyway, looks like Darth Vader going after Luke Skywalker. Typical. Luke Skywalker does have a heightened sentence, uh, heightened sentence senses, I think, a heightened perception. But uh, there's no one for him to shoot, so him having a combat of seven won't matter anyway. All right, so I have four attack dice, uh, one for the range one bonus and an extra one for targeting computer, advanced targeting computer. So four dice, um, kind of stinky there. I think I, I can either spend the target lock to roll two, or I can use the advanced targeting or the uh, fire control systems to re-roll one of them, which I did. Blank, of course. So it looks like I spent a force. To change a focus into a hit. Yeah. Kind of a stinky roll when you're at range one of someone, but it happens. And she gets two defense dice here. And missed the box. That's okay. Evade and focus, I think. She's, she's going to use a force, which I opted to tell her. She's got two... Yep, yeah, no damage. At range one, that's, that's a very, very good result. That's what she won as a defender. It's amazing how, how game-changing that force power actually is. Alright, so primary arc is not a, not a thing. 
Uh, but the secondary arc, she can roll three attack dice. The first hit does a damage, and anything after applies ion tokens. She does have her arc out the right side, so she can do that. And yep, range two. Perfectly fine. All right, she gets, it looks like, I can't tell, two focus and a blank, I think. Yeah, so I guess that was a miss. What's she rolling for? Oh, maybe she spent her target lock to reroll all of them. That's what that was. She got a crit, a hit, and I, I think that's two. It's hard to tell. I have... Okay, so I'm spending a force, I believe, or maybe my, my focus token. That's weird. Why didn't I spend my focus token? I spent a force instead, I think. Oh, my bad. Ideally, you, you want to spend maybe one force a turn if you can, because you're always going to regenerate one at the end of your turn. So that's ideal for me. But sometimes in situations, you either forget or have no choice but to spend more than one force per turn. All right, back to maneuvering. That was kind of a crappy round, that one. I mean, Luke Skywalker, no damage there. Oh, every party involved came out relatively unscathed. So we're about an hour and seven minutes in. About a half an hour left in the game as a whole. And now we're removing tokens, getting rid of stuff that we don't need. Her disarm token. Yep, yeah, there we go. I remembered. A little confused about the target locks, but I think we got it figured out. Okay, and it looks like we're ready. Y-Wing's moving first. Oof. 
Looks like a 4k turn. No action, but gets her in a nice position. Her turret, though, is stuck to the right. So if she's going to shoot anything, it would be at her primary arc. Unless my TIE Phantom magically happens to get over there somehow, which I doubt. If anything, I'd want to stay as far away from the Y-Wing as possible, but still get shots off. Because if I can stay outside of range 1 and 2, he won't be able to use his Ion. And the primary weapon attack is only 2 on a Y-Wing, so it, I'm not in that much danger. Okay, so I, I opt to take the Evade token here. Evade action. And now Luke Skywalker gets to go. Still on that rock. Not sure what I would do in Luke's position right now. I mean, there's a K turn. Oh, there's a Talon roll from the looks of it. It's either a three hard turn or a Talon roll, one of the two. Okay. That was good. Because Darth Vader is heading in that direction, so he's going to be in, in Luke's firing arc. However, both of her ships are now stressed. So no actions across the board. Although the target locks do remain. I believe Luke still has a target lock on Darth Vader. And it just barely clears. I was considering a barrel roll here, maybe to get out of his arc, but I wasn't sure. Like, if I were to barrel roll, I probably would have been out of his arc. Like, if I was more, if I was facing him in more diagonal manner, I might have been able to get away with that. But since we're almost head on with each other, a barrel roll would mean none of us would shoot. And she did a good job here because she's forcing my ships to split damage. Not something I wanted to do. Again, I wanted to focus fire, especially since uh, Luke still has R2-D2 and can regen shields. All right, Darth Vader's going. I'm showing her that she has heightened perception, which is a force ability that allows her to shoot first. And it looks like she might actually be doing that. Because again, Luke can regen force better than almost anyone else I've ever seen. Whatever becomes the defender, he regens one force. And you also regen a force at the end of the round. Yep, Luke is shooting first at range one. Four attack dice. Three normally, but one bonus for the range. And she's going to roll at some point here. <laughs> she likes to take her good old time. There we go. Wow, that was a good roll on her part. That looks like four hits. And three evade. I've never rolled that ever. So that's one damage, I think. One shield gone. Oh, she was looking at Proton Torpedo, but couldn't do it because she's at range 1. She keeps forgetting about the range requirement on the torpedoes. Yep, I took one shield damage there. And now I get to shoot back. I think she was hoping to destroy me before I shot, but I, I don't think she had enough dice to do it. Maybe she was hoping for some criticals, maybe a direct hit or something like that. Now I get four attack dice, one for the range 1 bonus... One for advanced targeting computer and two normally. And my roll kind of stunk. Um, probably spend my focus. I, I might re-roll first and then spend the focus. Yeah. And that was a hit. And do I spend my focus or not? Yep. 
Spin in my focus. So that's three hits. Not too shabby. He's got two defense dice, so he can come out with at least one damage done. And now that he's the defender, he gets that force back. And he rolled a blank and a focus. So he's going to spend a focus to, or a, a force to flip that to an evade, and that's two damage. So that's two shields gone on Luke. And now the TIE Phantom gets a shot at range 3 from the looks of it. Yeah, range 3. And she gets, um... She should get, uh... Is it one defense die normally, and then I guess another one? I don't know where the three's coming from. Let me check and see what the Y-Wing's agility is. No, it's only one. So I think I gave her an extra one by mistake. But again, I, we make mistakes. So no damage? Possibly? The Y-Wing has two shields gone at this point. So it, it might have been there might have been some damage that I missed while I was looking up at the card. Y wing shooting back two to two attack dice. I've got two evades, so no damage. Spending my evade, taking a cloak. Again, I landed a shot here, so I should have gotten an evade token to use for that engagement, but I didn't need one, luckily. But that's something I'm gonna have to remember in the future. Whispers ability. I should be getting because if I shoot first. I'll get an evade, and then I could use that evade for anything that shoots back at me. It's like going into battle naked. <laughs> Not smart. Well, it's a close one. I mean, the TIE Phantom has both shields gone. No hull damage. The Y-Wing has all shields gone, and the X-Wing has all shields gone. So, like, everyone's out of shields, except for Darth Vader. He's got one left. It's, it's anyone's game at this point. She's got a turret, which can ionize me and, and lock me down. The X-Wing, Luke, is going to be hard to kill. Unless I can do a lot of damage all at once. But we'll see. And I think she might have moved before I was ready to decloak. This this is another example of what sometimes we miss. Sometimes we miss the systems phase, but no big deal. I might have remembered the decloaking later. And I think she was going to make a three turn here, and that was going to. She was hoping that would be a blue maneuver because of her R two. But I reminded her that her R two unit only gives her an easier difficulty at speeds one and two, not three. So she changed it there. I let her do it. No, again, th th this is what we do. We, we f fly casual. We have fun. And I think at some point I remember that I was going to decloak, but what action was she going to take? Looks like a target lock, possibly. Either that or she moved her... Oh, she moved her turret to the other side. That's what she did. Oh, no, she's target. 
Target locking? I guess so. Oh, she's switching her target. Okay, so she took the target lock action. What's she doing? Oh, I, yeah, I moved the wrong target lock. I got them mixed up. I should have moved Darth Vader's target lock over to the TIE Phantom and not the X-Wings, but I think I realized this later when Darth Vader goes to shoot. Yeah, so now I realized I could have decloaked, so I'm doing it now. That's the way I was going to go anyway, because I figured her Y-Wing was going to fly in to get rid of that stress. So I wanted, I wanted to stay, like, along the outside of the board, if at all possible. Now, if I have a shot here, that would be good, because I'd have outmaneuver. Outmaneuver being able to reduce... Um, I took a focus. Uh, outmaneuver reduces the defender's defense die by one. If you're flanking him, that means that if I'm not in his arc. And now the X-Wing goes. Yeah, there we go. I fixed the target locks, just realizing that they were wrong. And did she take an action? Not sure. If anything, she would take a focus, probably. Or maybe disarm? Yep, she's disarming to regenerate a shield. Which I'm surprised, considering that the X-Wing could have shot at um, Whisper, but I did have a focus and evade, so the chances of her hitting me at that range might have been kind of bad. And now Darth Vader goes... And I believe it's a 3 Talon roll, if I'm reading that right. Hard to tell. Looks like it. Yep. That stresses me out, so I can't take an action. But my target lock from the previous round does carry over. So I'm not too worried about that. Alright, so Darth Vader gets to shoot first. And it looks like I'm going after Luke here at range 2. And I get... Oh, I lost... I, that's, this is the point in the game where my camera ran out of battery power and I didn't notice it. It comes back eventually, but I'll just have to eyeball it here. Judging by Idalee's head hitting the table, I'm assuming that she didn't roll very well. So she probably got some damage assigned to her. We'll see how bad it was. Probably, I would say, two or three cards. There's no way I could have killed her. Oh, she got a direct... She got a damage. Yeah. Uh, I can't read that. Sorry, dude. Nope. I think I show it to the camera later. I eventually realized that the other camera wasn't recording, and then I show it there. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head what it was. Um, it had something to do. Oh, I think he got ionized. It was. It was a. It was a. Yeah. It was an ionized effect. So um, he had to take an ionized effect, and then he repaired the card after it resolved on the next turn. But as an action, you can repair it as well. Oh, there it goes. It's back. Disabled power regulator. Before you engage, receive an ion token. Oh, you know what? Maybe I read the card wrong. She, she, she shouldn't have gotten an ion token there. It should have been before you engaged. But 
I wonder if I wonder if someone has a disarm token, if she would still be considered engaged or not. Just because she can't shoot doesn't mean that you skip them during the engagement phase. It just means they can't shoot. So that's something I'd have to look up later. The, w the way we played it in this game, she took the ion effect and had to resolve it next turn. All right, so at this point, I think Whisper is going to shoot the Y-Wing. She cannot, she has out, I have outmaneuver, so she can't roll any dice. And what do I do? Yeah, this is the part where I had to plug in the camera <laughs> closer to the wall, and I had to move the table, so we actually had to stand up and walk over to the other table. Yeah, it was... I need a better camera with a longer battery life. My video camcorder just isn't cutting it. Yeah, I just reminded her she can't roll a defense die because of outmaneuver. So, whatever I roll, that's what she has to get. So it looks like one damage, though. Oh, two. Okay, so two damage there. The Y-Wing, I believe, has six hull, so she still needs four more hits before she's out. And now the Y-Wing is going to shoot back. Looks like through the asteroid. So, primary weapon, that's two attack dice at range three. And, okay, so he, sh okay, that's range two. So you can either shoot at Darth Vader primary or, yeah, that makes more sense. Using the ion turret on, f on the TIE Phantom there. It's three attack dice. First damage is a hit. Any remaining is an ion token. I do have an evade token, so I'm hoping to negate a lot of that damage, if at all possible. Or ion token in this case. And that looks like two hits. And that's one evade. Or is that a... F oh, okay. So it's an evade there. I wonder if the other one is a focus. So, yeah, the other one is a focus. So one damage. Um, so I take a face down damage card. But no ion tokens because there was no more damage after that. All right, and I think that's the end of that round. We've got about 15 minutes left in this video, so things are going to be wrapping up here pretty soon. His X-Wing, or her X-Wing, could swoop right in there, destroy my TIE Phantom. That Y-Wing could maybe mess with Darth Vader long enough for the X-Wing to win, or maybe Darth Vader and the TIE Phantom just clear the board. We'll see. And there's the dog looking at stuff. Darth Vader has a stress, so it's not like he can do very much. Not if he wants to clear it. And again, my TIE Phantom should have gotten an evade token here for the damage that he did. And I could have turned that evade token in for a cloak, but I didn't, wasn't thinking. There's, there's probably a number of opportunities that, you know, could have negated some of those damages that I took, had I remembered. All right, so I regained a force token for my end phase there. Darth Vader got two out of three. And Luke Skywalker's full up, as he usually is.
All right, I'm reminding her that because she has an ion token, it would just go one forward. It counts as a blue maneuver. So if she were stressed, it would be removed. And the only action she can take is a focus. It looks like she may already have a target lock, so there's not a whole lot of other things she could do anyway. But Twelve minutes to go. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? And I should say this right now, um, no matter who wins, as long as you're having fun, that's what's important. As a parent, I'm obligated to say that. Or should I say responsible parent? We'll say that. And a casual gaming dad. All right, so... Oh, that's a good move on her part. She misses the asteroid. Darth Vader is right there. And she's swiveling her turret forward, I believe. Trying to disable Darth Vader. And she's trying to figure out which way she wants to do it. I think she's opting for the forward arc. Now, my strategy here is just try and do as much damage to Luke as possible, take him off the board. We would both shoot at the same time, but then I believe I remind her, I take a focus there, I remind her that she has heightened perception, which is a force ability. This allows Luke to shoot as if he were a pilot skill 7, meaning he would shoot first and there would be no simultaneous fire. Well, here's the ion. Resolving. And now Darth Vader goes. I think I did realize that she didn't get to take an action. Okay, so we bumped here. Darth Vader bumped the Y-Wing. So those two would not be able to attack each other. And again, in this combat scenario, normally Darth Vader would shoot first and could wipe Luke out. But she used a force power, used her heightened perception, if I remember the name of it. Yes, heightened perception. She gets to shoot first four attack dice with a focus token. That isn't on the board, but should be. There it is. Okay. I remembered. Or she, one of us remembered. And she's going to roll four dice. And look at that beautiful roll. Oh. Beautiful. That is what, ex that's exactly what Luke needed. I'm just saying. Now, Whisper only has a hull value of three, so there's no way to negate that. Not with two dice. Yeah, she's going to spend... Yeah, yeah. So that's two evade, but two damage is still enough to kill Whisper. So Whisper is out of the picture. Bam. And that was heightened perception, so he didn't even get to shoot back. Sad. Sad but true. Now Darth Vader gets to go. 
can't shoot the Y wing, but can shoot the X wing. The X, the Earth Vader still has that target lock, so he would get to shoot three attack dice or roll three attack dice. Now Luke Skywalker is looks like he's near death himself. One or two more damage cards ought to do it. Oof. What is that now? Okay, fire control systems, we're rolling that. Looks like a hit. Spending a force to turn a focus into a hit. So it looks like three hits here. The X-Wing should have a hull value of four, I believe. Yes. So... I think she has two hull left, so she needs to negate two of those damage. And she has an evade and a blank. Had she rolled a focus, she could have changed that to an evade with her force, but unfortunately, not an option here. So now Luke is removed from the board. Now it's a face-off. TIE Advanced versus a Y-Wing. And the Y-Wing should not be discounted because at the moment, you know, that, that turret could just be, you know, that could lock down Darth Vader and be the end of him. But we'll see. And there's six minutes remaining. So there's going to be a ship going down here very soon. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. The game starts speeding up toward the end because, well, there's less dials to worry about. And I'm debating on what I want to do. Now, I could do a three uh, Talon roll here and get right behind them. But I have no target lock, and target locks are exactly what I need in order for those two abilities to kick in. So do I f use a regular maneuver and just get the target lock without shooting and then worry about the next round, or do I try and go in guns a blazing now? That's the decision I had to make here. The Y-Wing can just rotate his turret, so it's not like he's got much to worry about there. Now, she used a one straight, didn't clear my tie advance, so she bumps and didn't take an action. Uh, that was kind of bad for her because she needed to get an action to rotate that turret or something, but couldn't do it. All right, so now I did a three. Yeah, so instead of instead of uh, going and guns a blazing, my goal was just to get a target lock. All right, no shots. Moving on to the planning phase again. Still a lot to think about. Now might be the time to barrel roll or to a uh, talon roll or something. It's either that or K turn. All right, Y wing is moving one slight turn, and now she has the option to move her turret or do something. Looks like she's going to move her turret facing toward me. So her right arc. No, oh, she changed her mind. She's probably for the best. Now it's facing the camera. But I'm out of range anyway. 
So it looks like, yep, I did a Talon roll here. Now her turret is 1 to 2. So if, if I can stay at range 3 and take pot shots at her until she dies, that would be ideal. Luckily, this is giving me the opportunity to regenerate some force, so I'm at full strength there. Okay, so it looks like... Two hits with a crit being... Yeah, my advanced targeting computer switched one to a hit. Or to a crit, rather. Oh, a two crits. Ooh. Nasty. Oh, no. One was a direct hit. So she had to take a face down damage card. And the other one was weapons failure. Okay, so I got two crits there. And the weapons failure, I believe, is roll one less attack die when you're attacking. Alright, so her Y-Wing has, it looks like, four damage cards assigned to it. We'll see what happens. It could still be turned around here. While we're waiting for the maneuvers, um, I'm just going to say real quick, uh, thanks for watching. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I've been to publish. And of course, remember, this is a casual game. Yes, we made mistakes, but we had a lot of fun doing it. I think Idly had a blast. And uh, I think she may, off camera, play around with some builds online to see what she likes, what she doesn't like. And maybe next time she'll come to the table with her own build. I try to pick stuff that would be ideal for a beginner, but still introduce her to things like force and charges and different things. Um, but yeah, there's other cards out there that are a bit more complicated. All right, so it looks like, yeah, her turret. Yeah, I can't tell what's going on. Yeah, so Darth Vader's going to shoot. He's got a focus and a target lock. Let's see what happens. Looks like range three again, which is exactly what Darth Vader wants. He does not want to be in the turret's arc. Which, it doesn't look like the turret is facing that way anyway. It looks like it's facing out the back. Alright, so that's three hits and two damage. Okay, so that looks like the Y-Wing is dead. And that, there goes the game, folks. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care of yourselves.